Hey, I'm Dr. Toby, physical therapist with Rehab Mobile. Thank you for coming to check out our channel. In this video, I wanna show you part two of how to deal with a groin strain in the early stages. This is gonna be really helpful. If you didn't see our part one video, check it out in our hip pain series. And I'm excited to show you how you can begin to improve your ability to walk or to sleep more comfortably and to do so many other activities that can be affected when you have a strained groin or you've hurt the front of your hip area and it feels like something has just been really painful for a while. So let's get right into today's video. And by the way, if you're new to our channel, you can stay connected to all of the videos we make because if you're someone who wants to stay healthy, pain-free, fit, and mobile, we make videos to help you achieve that in your life. So if you wanna live your best, feel your best, and look your best, this is the channel to connect to. Thanks for subscribing in advance. So let's go right into today's topic because what we're doing is we're going over the part two of addressing your uh, groin uh, strain if you have a strain in your groin. And this is purely for educational purposes, but also for you to be able to be knowledgeable and hopefully you're getting the right help wherever you are. And if you're not, you can hit the link in our description to get some of the best help that we can provide from our world-class experts who are doctors of physical therapy and specialists in hip pain. So uh, I'm gonna show you some basic things we talked about in the previous video, which if you haven't seen, you should check it out before you watch this one. But this is moving you to the next phase, right? So after you've been able to do some basic range of motion activities, you wanna start doing some isometric type of uh, work to help to build the strength and also increase blood flow and encourage healing nutrients to come and to start helping to improve the integrity of the uh, strained uh, structures. So what I'm gonna do is again, if you are not somebody who can lie on the ground, you can do this in the, in the, on your bed or on your couch or however is most comfortable for you. Some people have a difficulty getting off the ground and if you know that is a challenge for you, don't need to do it this way. And especially also if your groin strain makes it difficult while you're getting up, then this is something you should definitely be doing while you're on your bed. So, or on a surface that is not difficult for you to move from. So, really basic things. There are a couple ways that we can do this. Let's assume that I have a groin strain on my right side. What I'm gonna do is called an isometric hip flexion. I'm gonna bring this opposite side up and I'm gonna just push this way. Now, you're like, well, why are you doing the exercise on the other side? Well, because when I'm here, I will be still be encouraging some stability and activation on the opposite side. Um, and so I would start off with the unaffected side first, keeping my foot here, hold that pressure three seconds and relax. And this is now where we are getting to a more moderate phase of activity. Now let's say I've done, you know, maybe five, 10 repetitions on this side and I wanna do this side. I may be at a stage where I'm not even able to put any resistance like that. I just may be at the place where I can maybe just hold my leg up here, hold this. So essentially at that point, I'm kind of turning the exercise into a isometric march kind of thing, hold it in that position, or isometric hip flexion, hold it, you know, three to five seconds. And maybe that's the place I'm at. You don't wanna overwhelm the tissue. This is an injury where stress has already uh, been the main issue over stressing of the tissue. So you don't wanna necessarily feel like this is straining. So if after the first rep is really difficult, that shouldn't be the case. And we use a scale of easy, moderate to difficult. So this should be easy. I actually want you to do some stuff that's easy so that you can do maybe several reps, encourage some blood flow, and then by the time you've gotten to a few reps, you're starting to feel like it's moderate, that's where you want to stop with this kind of exercise. So maybe I'm here holding it three to five seconds and then doing this side, giving me a chance to rest on that side. And then same thing, three to five seconds, just having an isometric hold. And after a couple of reps, once it starts to go from being easy to being more moderate, that's when I want to take a break. And that's probably, let's say after seven repetitions, is where it starts to start getting moderate in terms of the difficulty level. Stop there, give it a rest, and then do maybe seven more, maybe even five more. So you don't have to necessarily do even reps. You kind of have to go with what your body is telling you. And so next exercise that we want to think about, again, this is if we're moving from that very early acute phase to moving closer to that subacute phase, meaning this is, you know, several, uh, you know, weeks or days after I've had the initial injury. So I'm here, I'm gonna do what's called a single leg raise or straight leg raise. And I don't need to go all the way up. This can put a lot of strain on your hip. Um, and so maybe you just start with the uh, quad set, the contraction. So what I'm doing is pushing my 
knee down. I'm gonna over exaggerate for you guys. I'm really pushing it down, moving that ankle back and just squeezing that quad set is gonna help to activate my rectus femoris, which is also a major hip flexor. So squeezing that is a good place to start. You can do that and just to kind of help encourage that. Um, if you are at a more advanced place, you can actually get that leg up there. It's gonna be helpful, but this may be too tough because of the amount of strain that you may have. So uh, keep that in mind. Other thing that you're gonna wanna think about is what's called a bent knee fallout. So what you're gonna do is we have both knees bent and I'll show you from this position so you can see what I'm gonna be doing is letting that leg drop. So I ideally uh, want to first, if this is the hip that has the strain, I'm gonna let my left leg drop. And just so you can see it, I'll demonstrate. So um, I'm gonna use my right leg, but I wouldn't wanna initiate this exercise on the leg that has the strain initially. So what we're doing is we're letting this leg drop and keeping this one stable. Because when your leg drops, your pelvis is encouraged to come with it just like that. So by dropping this leg out, what we're doing is we want to keep this leg as still as possible. And if this is the leg that has the strain on it, that's what we really want to do. We want to help encourage that stability, encourage that uh, leg keeping stable and steady and bringing it back up and then dropping it back down and keeping it nice, still and steady. So. This is kind of where I would be, what we would be doing to get someone going from that acute to that subacute phase as far as being able to uh, address that strain in their groin. And so there's a myriad of other things that we can begin to now employ as far as activities and things to help improve that. But uh, moving from this basic progression of what we talked about in part one to part two would be very uh, beneficial. So if you found this video helpful, like it and leave a comment. Let us know what was most helpful. And in our description, if you're somebody who wants to actually get your hip pain addressed permanently without relying on pain medications, injections, or having to get a surgery, hit the link in our description to talk to a PT first and we can tell you exactly what your needs are. All you need to do is answer a few questions and we can tell you exactly what treatments you can do to actually specifically be helpful for you because all of this that we're showing is really great, but it may not work for everyone depending on what kind of situation you have. And so you have to have specific guidance from an expert like a doctor of physical therapy who's not just gonna give you medication, but who's gonna tell you exactly how to make a full 360 or I guess 180 uh, turnaround in terms of the uh, symptoms and the discomfort that you're experiencing. So thanks again for hitting the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.